if you've ever looked into custom water tanks before, you know they are not cheap. And we actually already had a water tank in the van. It was a 20 gallon one, I believe, but rectangular and we needed it a very custom, awkward shape. So instead of buying one, Lance decided to figure out how to weld one, plastic weld, which plastic welding is a thing, but we have never done anything like this before. And when looking to figure out how to do it, we couldn't find any videos on it. So if you're curious on how to make a square plastic water tank into a custom shaped one, keep watching. Back in 2019, we spent the year building out our schoolie. After the build was done, we sold our house and traveled for a full year. Following that year of travel, we started to crave building again and getting something four by four. So I kind of got a technique going on. I mean, we're basically hot gluing it, but uh, what I'm doing is I just realized I was burning through that corner. Move that back. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's what's cool about plastic is- We can get cancer from the fumes. That it's uh, not moldable. So I need a trim these down again you can see the corners are off there we do need that angle though they've got to be at a separate height than each other <laughs> so you can kind of see what i'm doing there i think i just cut this wrong the first time i'm not exactly sure what i did i mean obviously it's wrong this is our tank here i'm pretty much welding this just like i would weld metal well tig weld metal so i basically have my filler rod here my torch here so I'm heating up the heat gun, and I do that because I want the uh, actual metal ring hot as well. So I basically tap these two corners together. I tap this one with it a little crooked, and while it was hot, I was able to move it back. So you can see I have a, a good corner there. So basically now what I will do is I heat this up with a little heat touching the, um, the corner here, and then I'm gonna slowly get that heat more into the corner because I want this plastic to actually melt to each other. Then I set it on top and then touch it. And by doing that, I'm actually like pressing the uh, plastic in place. And then what's cool about plastic is it takes a little to cool down so I can manipulate it as it cools. But it's like still cool enough where I could touch it like you were seeing. It's not hot, it's weird. It's a weird medium, medium to work with. And I'm sure a hot glue gun, like one of those industrial ones would probably work pretty good with this. I think they sell them with like ABS glue. That'd probably be better, but uh, I don't want to buy that. So I'm gonna just hold it here until it fully uh, dries. And you can tell it's fully dry for, I don't know what type of plastic this is. I was looking on the internet and I was seeing ABS, poly, all these different types of plastic. But so I have my four corners tacked, then I'm gonna go in the center, probably put a, like a tack there, a tack there, a tack, and kind of go down because um, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but when you heat this stuff up, it likes to move a lot. So I think by doing my little tackies, little tacky tacks, that's gonna help it from moving. I cut it just how I would cut a weld seam. Well, it's actually a little big on this side, but here, how, so that way I can get a bead of plastic there, essentially. She keep turning the heat gun off, but I want it to stay on so it can stay hot. So there we go. Now it's holding. Ah! And this like filler metal or filler plastic filler rod I'm using is actually just from cutting this top down. So it's the exact same plastic. I didn't go out to the store and buy it or anything. I mean, this is just like welding. It's it's a skill as well, where you need to get like the temperature just right, or if you melt through, or if you're too cold, it doesn't stick. It's kind of interesting. I think that's turning out really nice. So I think I'm just gonna do this whole side, and then I'll go through and tap. That way I can kind of practice, because I'm not very really good at this. So my goal is to plastic weld this like I'm doing, and then epoxy over top of it. And then I also think I'm gonna take some of that Flex Seal, and pour it on the inside and kind of slosh it around so it's like a sealed, a new seal. And again, we're not drinking out of this. This is the holding tank. Ideally, I don't want it to leak. If it does leak, I guess it's not the worst thing in the world because, I mean, we're just help us empty it faster, I suppose. So I hope you can see how that plastic turns clear. 
It's actually interesting. I can start to see where it's not getting quite hot enough so the plastic's not bonding correctly and where it is, which is kind of neat. I mean, it's always cool learning a new skill, especially when you do it all made up on your own with random tools. It's not the coolest day out, and this is not making any cooler in here. All right, so I think I came up with a pretty good technique with this stuff. If you were to do this with a tank, you would need to cut some strips off or buy some like strips of the exact same plastic. I don't know what plastic plastic this is, but this is just like a freshwater tank from Rec Pro, I believe, or something similar to that. So what I am doing here, uh, this is a way to do it without a plastic welder. So I'm kind of going to heat it up and run like this so as I'm heating it up I'm heating our filler as well as heating the material and I'm kind of just walking through like this pushing it in and you can see like the ribs it makes and then you can sand that down afterwards what I think I'll do after this is take a flush trim uh, like on a router and flush trim all this off and then come back through I got this two-part epoxy here and I'll mix some of that up and then go over the seams again. What I was doing is I actually had it this direction, but I would turn the heat gun on and I would work in about two, two inch increments. The idea is the thickness of your plastic, which I think this is um, like eighth inch or three sixteenths is the thickness you want this. So this would be a little too thick. If you can trim off littler pieces, the same thickness as this, pressing in. And the beauty of this is it's gonna heat up your filler and the other material as you're going. So you don't have to wait. You can just continue walking along here. Clearly not the prettiest results, but you can sand this down later. <laughs> when you're starting off, what I'm looking for here is the plastic to start getting a little clear. And then I can go ahead and start doing this. You can see how the plastic is starting to turn uh, a white color again. And you just kind of wait for it. So what I'm gonna try doing here is I got my router and then this is just a round over. I think it's a half inch round over. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick that puppy in there and we're gonna try to use it. So it's got the bearing, so it's like a flush trim. I mean, I guess almost all half inch round overs so like that, or round overs in general. This is not the most fun doing this when it's hot out because it sure puts out a good amount of heat. So, we'll set that about right there. Glasses, and we'll get a trimming. So I'm gonna try just a little tiny test strip first before I get crazy here. We almost need to sand one side smooth. And I think I changed my mind. I think I'm gonna do a three quarter round over because um, I would hate for it to be too tight and dig into the plastic and actually rip it away and we'll see if this works if not uh don't do it <laughs> again i'm just coming up with all of this as i go all right that's not even digging in See if I can take a planer to it. So the high spots are causing it not to be able to glide. So I dug in a little bit too much here. So I guess I'll have to re-weld that part. Super excited with how this tank turned out. Let me do it. It actually looks like it was made like this, which I mean, technically it was because I made it like this. But one thing I'd like to say is I'm gonna have to drill a hole in the top because that's where all the gray water's gonna come in at. But also uh, the idea is to have an electric actuator, probably like an inch and a half or something like that, and run it to a switch inside the van. So that way we can just dump this off an electric actuator, which will be pretty cool. I mean, this will just be sink water and we always use biodegradable soap. So essentially when we are full with this little tank, we kind of just go boop 
and it dumps out or we just leave it open depending on where we're at. Now, I'm sure we're gonna get these comments like, oh, that's bad for the environment, this and this, but from my point of view, it's not because septic tanks with liquids have leach fields and which is basically all the liquid just goes and leaches out into the ground and gets re put into the groundwater and into the environment anyways without filtration for like houses and a lot of businesses. This is how they do it. So by putting it on top, it's not like we're gonna be dumping it in someone's drinking water or in the street or anything like that. And that's the main reason for this tank. If you talk to people that live in a van full time or a bus, you're almost certain to run into them where they're dumping their gray or gray tanks out in the desert. Here we are with our broken insulation. Flew up the bed of the truck. One thing you can see here, rather can't see, is the water tank. So, why I made it custom. Oh, you still can't see it. Is it hangs underneath right above the rock sliders so no way for it to be punctured really unless a stick I guess goes up there that's why it is that strange like rectangle I guess so it's it's nice and tight in there and those fittings are gonna need to move but you can see the angles nice and then we'll kind of just make a strapping system to strap it down to these rock sliders here couldn't really make it any longer as you can see, we have our, those are our gas fills. And then on the other side, we are, we'll start hitting our uh, emergency brake cable there. So without having to relocate pretty important things, this is as big as we could get. All right, the battery's almost dead on here and I didn't charge the other one. The shininess around here is epoxy. Like I showed you, I was just been throwing it down right on the seam. So basically I'm putting epoxy on them as a reassurance and then again the flexion side for like a triple check. <laughs> 